Good afternoon, good morning, depending on which part of the world you are in. Uh, my name is Kunal. Welcome, everyone. Uh, we will begin this uh, short discussion uh, about the next in SOC. So uh, there are uh, there are new terms in the security world keeps on being added uh, uh, every fortnight. This technology and that technology, and uh, this particular term about uh, next gen SOC has been uh, doing rounds for a while now. So we thought this is the right time to talk about uh, uh, next gen SOC with our audience and help them understand what are the components of uh, next gen SOC and uh, uh, what would be the, the journey look like. Now, uh, many organizations might not even know where they stand up uh, in the security maturity roadmap. I will try to cover some part of that too today. Joining with me today is uh, Rohini. Uh, Rohini is one of our SOC leads uh, and she, uh, she has been with us for a while now. She manages uh, some of our big customers and in the past she has uh, done monitoring and shake handle shake up operations for uh, World Bank kind of uh, organization. Myself, Kunal, I manage the businesses for SecOps and data security at Pozica. This uh, is an outline of the agenda for today. We will spend some time in taking you through uh, an understanding of an excellent SOC, what are the components, how the security maturity roadmap looks like, what challenges uh, would you might face uh, when you are transitioning from a legacy SOC to an excellent SOC. That uh, sums up uh, more or less for our agenda. Uh, before we begin further, uh, we would just have a quick poll uh, just to understand uh, uh, how is monitoring them today in your organization. Helping me with this is uh, uh, Vikash here. Okay, we have the, the opinion poll now. Okay, so it looks like uh, uh, the, the top ones are uh, in-house team with the legacy SIM and an MSSP with the next gen SIM, quite interesting. We'll get back to uh, see more about this uh, later. Let me move on with the rest of the pack. So what, what is uh, a next gen SOC? Uh, let me just help you understand first, uh, beginning with uh, what is a SOC center? A SOC center is primarily a command and control kind of a facility which gains insight based on all the, the alerts, machine data flows which passes on to a monitoring tool and uh, there are SOC analysts who would uh, uh, review those alerts based on which they make decisions and take some action. To help you further uh, understand this, uh, we have just depicted a flow. So an, an organization might have quite a lot of uh, uh, IT landscape and assets. We call it the IT real estate. We have just depicted a few of those uh, like firewall and uh, sources generate a lot of uh, uh, logs. They generate events and flows. These uh, trigger alerts in, uh, in different applications. Uh, uh, SIM is the most popular one. In SIM application, they create alerts. And SIM can be uh, configured these rules can be configured to uh, to allow the person to have a, a view on what kind of alerts are coming, which data sources are giving you most of the alerts, which rules are the ones which are triggered most oftenly, and all this uh, helps them in the decision making. And once uh, they have analyzed that the alert, so. Uh, Based on these uh, insights, uh, they take that the decision uh, into action, wherein the remediation part done on the uh, the endpoint device or the sensors. Now, apart from SIM, there are multiple components in in a SOC center. 
there would be an Intel platform, there would be a dark web uh, uh, integration, there would be GRC tool, and, and there could be many more. What we are just showing is a depiction of how things happen in a stock center. What, what does the uh, uh, flow of uh, tasks looks like? This has got uh, typically uh, two components, the, the technology part of it and the process part of it. These two, and of course, this all of this is carried out uh, with the help of uh, the people. The use of this technology that we run to us. That's tonight. Now, looking at uh, uh, a legacy SOC. Now, what we are trying to here show is uh, what kind of integrations have uh, been traditionally being done, which are typically you would see the network traffic flows into the intrusion data flows into. There are a few legacy tools which will allow you thread intel capabilities, but those are just limited, as in the feeds are incorporated, but how essentially they are used is very at a very elementary and a native stage. Same is the case for assets and identities. There are uh, classical tools where these assets and identities can be integrated. However, making use of this data is very limited to signature-based uh, uh, alerts. At the core of this is primarily a log aggregation correlation tool. Some of them do have alert management, but then at a very uh, native stage. And what kind of uh, outcome do you get once you have got this data integrated into this, uh, in, into the log aggregation tool? It gives you the capability to basically monitor your uh, security activities, alerts, and offenses. It helps you with the correlation and sequencing of uh, uh, alerts which have come in. It helps you validate uh, whether they are false positive, whether they are benign positives, are they working, which are the rules which need to be fine-tuned. Gives you all of those uh, uh, at a very classical model. And with the help of this and user insight, it helps you prioritize and review the alerts. Now, looks like the basic functionality is all available, but then uh, what problems do people face? Over the uh, last few years of our interactions with multiple customers globally at a variety of set and size, there are certain uh, problems which we see with these uh, tools. I think I to discard this. Okay. The first and foremost challenge which soft teams uh, on a classical or legacy uh, monitoring would suffer is uh, the long time it takes to try as investigation. All the processes which I just mentioned, making use of the, uh, the threat intel, establishing identities, identifying the root cause, all of these are manual processes and it takes quite a long of uh, hours even to do a simple investigation. It's not just the investigation which is uh, manual, the resolution is also manual. They need to individually go visit those sensors, visit the applications and IPs and infrastructure and make those changes, which is manual. Another important point is about the coverage. Now, uh, the, with the limited capabilities, uh, uh, either, either the coverage of log sources is very limited, even if they have the coverage, the, the legacy sim would not be able to give you the full visibility whether the log sources are giving you the, the alerts or not. It needs continuous monitoring and sometimes, not sometimes, I've seen uh, on some examples where very often the log sources go silent. But how do you monitor these things when the log sources themselves have gone silent? That's another issue uh, which brings down the capability of the SOC team to do the monitoring and investigation effectively. Since the process is all manual, the knowledge on how to respond to an incident is totally reliant on the heroics and knowledge of the people. The workflows uh, are not uh, refined, even if they are refined, every individual would take up things uh, with their own perspective and will go ahead with the uh, resolution of their own uh, uh, interpretation of things. That brings down the efficiency of the uh, Sock center. 
and last part is the lack of a single source of truth now what what do i mean here is because uh, the soc analyst will need to refer to a lot of applications need to go through multiple resources to find out the information they need and this information might change over a period of time today i might have made some decision based on particular uh, insight and that insights might not be valid still be valid uh, in due course of time so it's very hard to collect these evidences and come up with a single source of truth now these are the common challenges we see in legacy soc coming up next is how would a next in soc address those things now here i'll start with uh, the technology part first depicted here are the most important components of the next gen soc sim as you might already be aware is a mounting tool it helps you in log aggregation and building up the context and enrichment of others uba brings in the insight about behavior of users and entities organization wide across the globe it helps you get uh, more insight and predict uh, behavior of people before the attack actually happens soc component is primarily automation of responses once the orchestration is done once the, the data analysis are done it helps you take the automated response now in order to for these in order to for these uh, components to work efficiently they need a lot of data sources to be integrated and that includes not just the the typical landscape data but also the modern data from tools like cloud security secure web access gateway identities spam tools iam tools sorry about that interruption so i i don't know at what point it uh, the voice quality went bad let, let me just uh, spend a minute to roll back what i just mentioned so in in the next gen soc there are three uh, most critical components i mean there are could be more as well but the three are the most critical ones which is sim uba and soc now sim uh, here uh, what i'm mentioning here is a uh, next gen sim which has got much deeper correlation capabilities real time enrichment and uh, bringing up the contextual uh, data upfront uba you might have heard the name already is uh, uh, primarily user entity behavior analytics this helps people this helps the soc analyst to create user persona and based on their behavior not just the, just the signature and based on which they can go deeper into predicting the behavior of uh, individuals and entities and then they can take corrective course of actions soc is uh, is another component of a next gen soc which is uh, purely on automated response it integrates well with your uh, itsm tool it integrates with uh, uh, the the network monitoring the not tools as well it can help you take automated response with the help of playbooks and response bots now these components of uh, a next gen soc would need a uh, better integration with a variety of data not just the classical data which is network intrusion or endpoint but also a good interaction with uh, cloud sources with cloud monitoring tools like swg and caspi with uh, pam and iam tools and also with itsm now with all this integration what do you get what we do get here is uh, uh, ai ml based threat detection uh, capability what i mean here is uh, not just the alerts which are triggered in in the which which are set up in the platform but also a self learning platform which can detect these uh, uh, behavior and can fine tune the rules on their own another important uh, uh, outcome which you get from a next gen soc is deciding the best path to remedy it like i said the processes when they are dependent on people and people have a tendency to work with their own practices and uh, with their own way it's very hard to follow the best process and leaving everything to the interpretation of individual is uh, uh, it, it puts the entire uh, soc posture the security posture on risk and that's where the automated response will help you decide the best path 
it also helps you create the digital impressions and uh, timeline reconstruction of the event to understand what techniques were used by the uh, with the ROG engines or the malware, based on which we can go back and then understand how do I fill up the gap. And this is a kind of insight you get from next sock Rohini will talk more about uh, uh, giving some examples about UBA and SOAR in subsequent slides. Hi, all. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, yeah, welcome to the talk. Uh, so before we, uh, I still have a few more slides. So before we uh, and before we jump on to looking at UBM, so I just needed to establish the fact that why would organizations need this transition? Now there has been a, a thought process uh, or belief that sophistication of tools like UBA, MDR, HDR, or SAW, these are all quite applicable in enterprise size organization with large scale, very heavy IT infrastructure, those kind of things. That's not true anymore. Every organization is now vulnerable of respective for their shape, size and geolocation, and they would need security monitoring. I've just outlined here uh, some uh, top reasons on why would you need the next insert. Talking about security, you can't leave uh, compliance behind. So compliance is at the forefront of uh, uh, the, the SOC world. And very recently, we have seen in India, uh, a new regulation data protection and data breach regulation has been uh, in, uh, pushed, which mandates all the organizations to report a data breach within six hours. Now, how do you get to identify data breaches, do the investigation, arrive at the quantum of it, and do a compliance reporting within six hours. You definitely need a lot of uh, integrity, uh, integrity, real time uh, enrichment of data and decision making to arrive at these kind of things. That was just an example of global compliance. Uh, there are more. Uh, in the recent months, we have also seen uh, the increase in attacks, both from the quantum of it, which has seen every day increase of more than 300% on number of uh, cyber attacks being made on individuals and organizations. And it's not just the quantum which has increased, the sophistication has uh, also increased. It's very hard to distinguish a phishing attempt or a malware attempt which is being made. Next one is uh, definitely the uh, work culture and the customer trust. When I say work culture, now we have seen a big transformation in the way people access data. Uh, organizations have opened up uh, their networks so that people can work from home, connect securely to the databases and then uh, access the data. However, data breaches happen quite a lot still and this is one of the reasons why the attacks have also increased. Now, what we have seen is typically 90% of the data breach happens because of an insider or one of the, uh, the end users which would have uh, gone, uh, would have clicked a malicious link and would have opened the gateway to the, uh, to the attacker and the log sources. Mm -hmm. The last trigger for all of this is uh, the regaining the customer trust. Ecom has driven the world uh, in a very fast lane and uh, gaining the customer trust has been an issue. And so far, it has been uh, uh, other factors which have contributed. But as we are seeing the trend going on, all the SaaS world, the cloud has brought in so much of capability. The customers are looking out for a trusted vendor with whom they can do business, be it at a consumer level or at an enterprise level. So to gain the customer trust, we need to assure them that we are a safe organization to deal with. Our security posture is robust and the organization is monitored. The data is safe with us. That is the trigger for uh, moving to the next in SOC. I'll just take a pause here for any questions if you have.
I see there's a question here uh, from Josh, uh, uh, which is I'm a startup company. Do I start with legacy SOC, which might cover my needs, but will be a bit basic, or do I start with next gen SOC, which includes all these features which I might not require? Josh, uh, uh, irrespective of whether you are a startup company or a large enterprise or established player, the four points which I have highlighted here are still relevant for you. The global compliance still apply to you. Even if you are operating in a domestic market, most of these uh, uh, country specific rules are influenced by global compliance rules like GDPR. So you, that, there is an element of compliance you still need to be mindful of. Even though you are a startup, the magnitude of uh, seriousness of the data which you might be handling, be it the customer data or your transaction data or the card data cannot be ruled out. So those, uh, uh, the size of the organization uh, plays a very small role in the sensitivity of the data you might be handling. And the last part, which is about the customer trust also applies quite uh, relevant. So it's uh, uh, it's a small price, I would say, which you would pay for the next gen SOC. Irrespective of the capabilities to make sure that these pain points are addressed, it is still required that uh, you move on to the adopt the next gen SOC uh, partner or a tool. However, uh, as a startup company, you might also like to observe what are the commercial model you have. The concern which we see typically from people is uh, the high capex involved in migration. We will come to that part. We will address this as one of the challenge uh, in subsequent slides. I hope I answered your question, Josh. Thank you. Uh, for the next uh, Next section, I would invite uh, Rohini to take it from here. Over to you, Rohini. Thank you, Kwan. Hi, all. Good evening to everyone. It's like, uh, we are going to start with uh, discussing on the core components which is involved with the next generation sign. We call that as an next generation soft because we use all the components which is coming from next generation, uh, next generation sign because this uh, prime technology uh, technology and also with the people based on the tools which we use we call them as an next generation saw uh, primarily at the next generation sun components we could see uh, uh, data uh, real-time data enrichment and uh, detecting of uh, unknown threats in the landscape uh, that is based on the UEB and we covered in the last portion as a SOAR component that is like uh, we do with a response and automated action. Okay, to go in detail about the collect any data, it doesn't mean that you are collecting a single of uh, initial and traditional sign we collect only the security uh, appliances data that does uh, primarily will have firewall as your security appliance and you will have a proxy and also you will have some networking components and also you might have an endpoint antivirus or you might end up uh, availing for uh, web application firewalls. Right now, that doesn't uh, cover all your threat landscape because uh, uh, in next generation, uh, next generation sign will cover the wide variety of data. That is like, it takes, uh, really it takes with the big data, it, it comprises all the data sources which is available in your organization to have a real-time enrichment in your logs. Real-time enrichment is like nothing but uh, you here you use uh, machine learning algorithms. It's like it's like actually self-learning feedback. Initially, you'll go with the anomaly detection and adaptive learning with the machine learning algorithm. Uh, there will be analysts sitting for reviewing this uh, ML-based results, which is coming from the uh, science solutions. Uh, then context enrichment is happening based on the data input feedback, which is uh, uh, reviewed by the analyst. This is covered with the real-time enrichment. And also then comes with the uh, uh, detect and unknown threats. This majorly covers with the behavior-based one, that is like UEB, user entity behavior analysis. Here, the user uh, entity and also the uh, 
the intention of uh, getting this UUB component is like right now we cannot uh, expect that uh, the feeds uh, the threats will happen only from the external source there could be a, a possibility for threats available inside our organization also that's the reason this UEBA component is also taken into the consideration this goes with the parameter of behavior analysis based on the behavior which is uh, which seems to be abnormal in that kind of cases this UEBA will help us uh, learn the model methodology which has been given from the baseline trend which has been seen in the previous of our security risks which has been associated uh, which has been assessed for our organization so uh, the incident threat and cyber security threats which see which we see in the outside organization also the input parameters will be a feeder with the UEB component then all the evaluations will be happening for detect our unknown threats Next comes the SOAR. This is one another major component which is involved in the next gen science. Uh, SOAR is nothing but you take all the inputs from uh, science like uh, data enrichment and also this uh, UEB component. We automate something based on the behaviors and also based on the uh, contact with, uh, context which has been enriched based on the science uh, intelligence. Then we perform, we write a playbook for performing the incidents to happen with automation response. We also do search and investigate. There also comes the component of threat hunting and also the real time feedback which the analyst gives based on the adaptive learning. Uh, analyst also, it's an ongoing process which gets involved in the search and threat hunting. And also then the dashboard and reports give you gives you the wide visibility of SOC incident post uh, inc security incident which is happening in your organization and the KPA parameters to be validated with the reports. The link analysis could be an online reputation for a kind of sandbox environment. Next comes the Next comes the key strength of unified platform. It's like next generation sign is also called as a unified platform because it's a single plan of a uh, pane of glass in that you have a com uh, all three core components in the sign uh, next generation channel is UEB, so uh, sign with uh, machine learning and also with the SOAR platform it comes. Here, as I already mentioned, and also the inputs from Kunal states that it has the coverage of wide variety of logs which comes in, uh, which has been handled in your organization in a single platform. And also it's, it reduces the time to navigate inside the console because it or, already makes a log correlation and aggregation to give you an efficient result. And also fast learning curve from a single platform. All the, uh, all the related details are given you in the same console, you don't want to refer to multiple consoles to extract information. Granny RB, uh, RBAC is nothing but role based access control. It's like uh, one another component of uh, UEBA. UV, UV, and data masking for sensitive information is like we'll have a critical information that does not be shared to all the resources who is working under the security team. So, this is also incorporated in the next generation science and comprehensive dashboard is nothing but it gives a wide range, a wide range of uh, uh, details or insights about the security parameters which has been validated by the SOC team and also the reports which needs to be incorporated for our client or for internal organization purpose to enrich our security measures based on the uh, SOC team's inputs. Next goes the, I'll be discussing about the real-time data enrichment. This is a real case study which has been happened with honor of our next generation sign tool. Earlier, uh, there is a legacy uh, SOC and also the next generation SOC. There is a major traditional SIM will have a raw event which has been uh, which has been highlighted now. This raw event, you cannot exactly correlate what kind of details which is, which is uh, given. Hedge.com is the account uh, details which has been given in the uh, raw event. And also some IP addresses and also it is a weblog data. 
Majorly, you could see the IP addresses which is involved in that. It has been highlighted in the environment, but we cannot exactly correlate to which account it is associated and which uh, IP it is trying to communicate. This uh, IP is uh, repetitions. You cannot manipulate with the raw end. You need to uh, uh, try to reach out to multiple uh, consoles. Say, example, for IP address, you will be using IP void or abuse IP DB. Uh, this kind of online sources is needed here to validate the IP reputation and to get the account uh, information. You, you will have a multiple services like you might end up remedy or uh, for that you might go and extract account inf information from that portal. So it is going to be a time taking uh, process for one resource to get all kind of information which is involved in this particular incident. Here comes the next generation validation with the data enrichment and also with the uh, log correlation. You will get all kind of information. Say example, who has been involved, ha Harry has been involved and he is the IT admin for that particular uh, organization. And what? What asset is it involved? Is it a normal end, endpoint or as an admin workstation or a server like that? A details are there. Where is the geolocation from uh, from which IP is, it has been communicated? Is the IP blacklisted or not? That kind of information based on the threat and information uh, source, we, we were able to get it. And one another key important here is like batch data. This is like with the UAE bay. We have a baseline setup for the user, whether the user will do this kind of activities or not. We'll be assessing the risk of the user and the activities performed by the user on that time. We could see the user was not available on the system at that time. He was away from the desk. This is the data enrichment which has been taken from the sign component and also from the UEBA component. This is one another major data which should be taken into consideration for evaluating this security risk here. Harry is away from his disk. This is the one important thing which should be taken into the consideration. Next, we will move on to the next slide. I'll give an illustrative approach to phishing response with the legacy soft and also with the next gen soft. Initially, we had a soft mailbox to report all kind of phishing mails which we get in our organization or all the resources will be guided, uh, will be established with the SOC uh, mailbox kind of to, to whom to reach out. That SOC mailbox will just gives us the email, is it, uh, just uh, will be provided with the phishing email. Then we should take the phishing email and we should analyze the phishing email from where the email is coming. There could be a parameters associated with the email. It's like a sender address and the recipient address subject and the content of the email should be evaluated. For that, checking the uh, indicator of uh, indicators for that send, uh, email is like, we need to uh, check the validation for the sender reputation. Is that from the particular domain, the sender is originating or from some other domain, is the sender compromised? Is the sender, valid sender is sending the email? This kind of a header validation should be performed manually by the security analyst, that is one another. The other component plus like user need to extract, this like software analyst need to extract the information from the sign. Is the recipient valid recipient? Does he belong to this organization? Whether the same sender has uh, sent out an email previously to our organization, this kind of law correlation, it takes time for a software analyst to do. It might take one month of data award. It needs a continuous data, past history to be evaluated there. So it's a time consuming process for a SOC analyst to do that. And they know the file. It's like if that phishing email comes with a malicious attachment, it could be a malware file or it could be a, a URL attached to that file. It redirects to some other, uh, some other malicious link and it drops some uh, exe files into the machine. This kind of validation should be done by a SOC analyst manually. Then this, uh, if at all, it's a malware file and we should check what kind of processes at this getting involved, if the file is getting quarantined, if you have security uh, email appliances, then there could be chances for your file getting quarantined in this. 
and also the malware behavior. To some extent, you can try to get ex extract information from area. If not, you need to do online sandboxing or to do a manual malware analysis to analyze the file. Then create an incident for that with the severity. Then work. Uh, then you need to work on that to validate whether all these things are done by a SOC analyst here, and it's going to be. It is. Uh, it has much time involved in it to comprise how much uh, this is valid to a certain extent or not. So it's time consuming. When we compare the same thing to next generation SOC, the email comes into the malicious email is getting into the security portion. Then it is pushed directly to the SOAR platform. SOAR has already discussed its security. SOAR is an automation thing. And it's uh, determined, it's known as security orchestration and automation response. Here, it, it gets the input from the sign. As I already told, it, uh, the sign extracts the information from other email, it could be IP or the domain or the email attachment, and also it gets validated from the threat intel that, uh, and also the sign and encrypt, uh, encrypt, encrypt all the data in the same console, and also it has the online sandboxing with itself to do the data uh, email valid email validation, and also the malware uh, file validation will be done by sign itself here. It, the SOAR, it, it does its uh, work based on the uh, playbooks and also the methodology which has been described to it. Then itself can create a ticket for that. It also uh, mentions its severity and also notifies to the SOAR analyst to validate the mail to, it's like uh, we can send the mail to uh, block the indicators in the firewalls or like that. Sometimes it can be also automated. Sometimes stock analysts can take from there and to move on to the next level also. These are the major difference which we could see from the legacy uh, stock to next gen stock. Here the timeline will be the major uh, thing to be taken in, into consideration. It's like uh, stock analysts should have a knowledge in the legacy stock to do all kind of activities which is performed in the next gen by ML or the uh, or the intelligence which is available with the sign platform. And with the fraction of minutes, next gen soft will perform its own task based on the already refined methodology and also with the uh, playbooks or uh, which has been sourced to short platform. Next point. Next, uh, Kunal will be handling about the what are the challenges we face when we. Thanks, Amani. Uh, so, what we saw in the previous conversation was about uh, how these three components uh, uh, help you. Uh, the same path will help you getting more out of the, the data enrichment. The UBA part helps you get a real-time analysis. What is happening on a real-time point? Where is the user? Whether the insights are blacklisted? Those kind of details is what a UBA will give you. And then uh, uh, this approach of uh, automated response, where what it used to take five to six hours, which is a day's work for an analyst, can be done in a few minutes. And that too, without any manual interruption, and just need to inform the analyst what access have been taken. That's the capability uh, next in soft would have. All right. So <laughs> what it takes for organizations to adopt this? You know, what, what are the deterrence uh, factor for this? Um, Vikas, I need your help here to run the second poll. I just need attention from all of you to uh, choose uh, from these five uh, things, depending on what you think is the most relevant security challenge for an organization. Is it building up uh, the technology and process skill for the team? Is it uh, that the, the security stake 
the tools uh, need to be identified and you struggle with finding out which tools should be there. Uh, the third option is about uh, understanding the best fit SOC architecture. There are many things in the, uh, there are many models to do this. When we stand the security roadmap and the initial cost of modulation and set it. We will end the poll now. If you have not uh, exercised your right to vote, you can do that now. So here are the results. And uh, it's not different from what we have seen in the market. Identifying a SOC architecture is the top tool, top uh, concern people have on their mind, uh, followed by the maturity roadmap. Where do they stand? What it takes to go to the next level? And then followed by the cost. Of course, uh, things come at a price and uh, uh, sky's the limit uh, uh, when it comes to investments uh, on IT tools and all and there has to be a best fit. We will see in the uh, subsequent slide on what challenges and how do we face it. So what uh, we'll do now is uh, I'll take you through the, the soft maturity roadmap. Now we have uh, come up with this uh, uh, diagram. It looks a bit complicated, but let me just help you understand this. There are Primarily, there are these five levers uh, uh, on the security roadmap. Securing a perimeter is the first one. At level one, organizations would first strive to secure their perimeter. And they would do so with, uh, with all the, the individual uh, specific tools for the particular technology. However, within security perimeter itself, while initially you would have started with just the firewall and IPS ideas, things need to evolve. And uh, uh, the cloud access booking, SASE and the CASB uh, tools need to be part of your securing the perimeter over a period of time. Once you have attained the security perimeter uh, uh, maturity, you then move on to the level two where you start enriching your log sources and having the log aggreg aggregation. This is where the use case engineering and the SIM engineering takes into place, which helps you uh, creating a better enriched data on which you can do the contextual uh, search and uh, establish the user identity correlations. That's the level two part of it with better aggregation and correlation capabilities. Now, once you establish those uh, capabilities, then comes the automation part. And here again, uh, uh, the automation will start with the integration of the automation tools with uh, the organization security tool set. We typically look at, uh, uh, as, as a maturity starts with the integration, the script-based automation, playbooks automation, which is primarily by the tool, and uh, the response bots, which can take care of the complete automation right from the time the alert has come in, blending it with the, the threat intel data, identifying what response should be, sending the response, quarantine the data, quarantine and isolate the applications and then take the remedies and action. That's the next level of maturity. Uh, beyond this now, we once you establish these three things, then we start looking at what insights do we have? Does the SOC have capabilities to self-learn? And this is where the, the ML-based analytics and IOC hunting, all these integrations takes place. It should be able to do the automated search. It should be able to establish the thread chains and Build uh, all this is built upon a data reconciliation. The last part of this is uh, predictive analytics, which starts with understanding the behavior, correlating those behavior with uh, the the threats and the the uh, the malware signatures which we will see, and then uh, using the capabilities of more sophisticated tools for deception and deploying the decoy which will direct any raw traffic, understanding how they behave, what techniques they have used in the past, and then accordingly drive the behavior. So this, uh, this is our vision of the SOC maturity. Now, <clears throat> as, a, as a start point, before you arrive at your SOC architecture, you need to understand where does the organization currently stand across all these levers. Maybe you might already have uh, attained some maturity on the <coughs> log aggregation capabilities. However, you might just have started with only 
script based automations uh, uh, address automation layer. So that's uh, the maturity roadmap. Now coming to <clears throat> what stops people from doing this journey. These are the five factors which we consider uh, which uh, deter the organizations to go ahead uh, and attain the maturity. And you would notice these are the same five options which I had asked earlier. About the skills, about the, the tools which uh, are relevant choosing the tools, coming up with the architecture, doing an assessment and the cost of mobilization. Now, how do you solve for this? And this is where uh, the uh, next gen uh, uh, SOC uh, from will come into play. And that's the slide uh, which I wanted to show you about how uh, MSSP with next gen SOC capabilities will help you address these challenges. Now, there are these five levers uh, which will help uh, uh, next gen SOC. And when you are going for uh, any SOC architecture and you are looking out for an MSSP, these are the questions you should be asking them. Do they have a next gen Siemens or do they have a robust implementation methodology and practice? Will they document <coughs> IR workflows and uh, the, the, the dashboards? On the assessment side, uh, uh, you should be mindful to ask them to do the IT landscape, understand your IT landscape, do a proper threat assessment using frameworks like MITRE. Once they have done the assessment, do they have the capability to uh, offer you a complete uh, security toolkit? And lastly, do they have their own uh, library rules to okay. define the rules which they need? The next part is about what kind of a security architecture will the next gen SOC uh, partner will provide? Do they have a scalable and flexible cloud-based uh, SOC platform to offer? Do they offer you modular services? We have talked about a host of services, right from alert monitoring to you can have branch sweating, you can have domain uh, monitoring, you can have so many things. Do, does the MSN partner have the capability to deliver those services to you in a SOC architecture which works best for you? The next, uh, I wanted to talk about the SOC maturity. How would the MSS partner help you attain a level of maturity and refinement? Do they even have a roadmap for this? Can they build it up for you? Do they have the end to end execution capabilities? Having a roadmap is not good enough until you have the capability to execute them. Will an MSS partner support you beyond just the monitoring operations? Do they have an engineering capability across all these tools? Do they have uh, uh, consultants, security consultants who have seen these modules, who, who would work towards uh, helping you with a zero trust or a zero day attack kind of a uh, capability? And the last part is you should be questioning about the uh, the commercial model. Uh, do they offer you a transparent OPEX model? Do they have, like I said, uh, scalability uh, and flexibility of cloud? and how agile and how aggressive is the project timelines. All of this is fine, but if it is going to take three months of time to set up your SOC design and implement, you're not going to wait for that long. Many things could go wrong in three months. A country can get evaded in three months time. We have seen that. So can they help you with a very aggressive uh, project timelines, something like four weeks and your set SOC is up and running. These are the ways uh, 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 in which you can address those challenges and uh, get get a, uh, your MS3 partner to deploy, to provide the services to you so that you can attain the short maturity as I have described previously. So that's the part uh, I wanted to uh, conclude our session today. I would uh, open up for questions now. I see we already have a question. Uh, Pravita Dori about uh, are there any mandatory sources or companies to start SOC for our company? Well, yes, uh, uh, like I said, uh, uh, in the maturity, it starts with uh, the basic components. Your crown jewels need to be protected first. What needs to be protected on priority? Your data sources, your database servers, and then there are the host of things uh, which, is, which we recommend uh, as a checklist that look in your 30, 60, 90 day plan or the three, six, nine months plan, we will establish with a basic uh, security portion monitoring for you. Then we will move on to automation. Then we'll move on to advancements of predictive. 
depending on where do you stand on your journey in the roadmap. So it is not mandatory that you start deploying everything and integrate all the data sources today. You can just start small with as small as a 10 GB uh, license where you integrate your basic uh, things and then you scale up as you have seen the things growing up. And this is where an MSSA partner will be able to help you in scaling up your SOC <clears throat> so that you don't have to keep investing and buy bulk capabilities. You can always scale up as and when you integrate more data sources as and when you add up more employees and more monitoring tools to your stack. Does it answer your question? I take that as yes. Any other question from anyone? You can type it in the chat box, chat box, or you can voice it out. Uh, if there are no further questions, you have uh, mine and Rohini's uh, details here. Uh, anything related to soft maturity assessment or the commercial model, how you do the, uh, how we do this, you can always reach out to uh, any of us on the number we have mentioned here or on our uh, email ID here and we'll be more than happy to assist you.